10 inch uh, craftsman contractor saw that I bought brand new about 35 years ago. Pretty nice, cast iron table throughout, even the extensions. The original motor was not enclosed. Um, it failed midway through the ownership. I've replaced it with this uh, one and a half horsepower enclosed motor. Motor cost more than the saw did uh, when originally uh, purchased. It's always um, had a little bit of vibration and uh, I guess uh, that's a little bit typical of contractor saws, you know, because of this uh, where the motor can uh, is free to lift. It's not a cabinet maker's uh, table saw, but uh, I'm wondering if I can maybe improve that a little bit. And I think that it would be a pretty good uh, case study for vibration analysis and um, how we can use budget oscilloscopes to help us out with that uh, vibration analysis equipment, uh, just like dynamic balancing equipment is quite pricey. And we're going to try to uh, do some of that with uh, very low cost equipment. So for those of you that uh, are not familiar with FFT, Fast Fourier Transform, uh, there's a nice little uh, tutorial on uh, Gadgets 53. Go take a look at that. Come back here afterwards. So um, we've got two peaks here, uh, one at 59 uh, hertz. I believe that coincides uh, very well with the uh, 3450 RPM of this motor. There's another one at 42 hertz, and I'm not quite sure what that coincides with because there's not a secondary RPM here. The pulley on the arbor is the same diameter, two and a half inches as it is on the motor. So the blade, which is still on here by the way, just recessed below the table, is uh, turning also at 3450 RPM, which would be roughly uh, 59 hertz. So uh, the 42 hertz is um, our puzzle here. Check this out. 20 thou. The other face also runs out and it's parallel. It's just that uh, the bore was never true to the V groove. was born like that. The other one is similar the one on the arbor. So both of these pulleys are about the same. I'm kind of thinking possibly as these rotate, um, there's an interaction there with uh, the wobble of one onto the other and uh, produces that uh, 42 hertz. That could be one explanation. The gold standard in uh, replacement pulleys for table saws is a company called Inline Industries. They make uh, pulleys out of solid steel, all machined, um, very nice. Um, pricey if you live uh, in the States, outrageous if uh, you live in Canada and I'm 10 hours north of Toronto. By the time I would uh, get these things um, shipped out here and with the exchange rate, Likely a little bit of a surprise with Canada Customs because it's a crapshoot with them. Sometimes I order stuff from the States and there's no duty and then sometimes I get an extra bill from them and there is duty. So it would be well in excess of 200 bucks, 250 bucks. Um, I'm going to entertain some other options here. So let's switch over to drive belts here for a minute. Also at Inline Industries, they make a a drive belt that is uh, in segments and you can uh, make, a, make up the length that you want and they claim that uh, that runs smoother. My gut says no and a quick uh, search on the internet you'll find a lot of reviews that uh, kind of substantiate uh, my concerns about that. So I'm sticking to uh, best quality kind of drive belt I can find. The idea with some of these is that uh, they have memory and they'll really hold that uh, shape of that pulley and then, uh, you know, they'll make everything kind of go because the belt is just too stiff. 
So this one's pretty good for that. But here's a problem. If I measure this belt, along its length, I find that it has about, you know, 15 thou or so discrepancy, maybe 20. Uh, it's a little hard to measure, it's soft, but there is discrepancy along the length of this. So I went in town and I checked out a couple of stores and I measured the belts that they had and they uh, were pretty much the same in that 15 or so thou discrepancy on the width. So I stuck with my old belt. So as to um, the pulleys, I went over to my local uh, industrial supply store and he says that he can order pulleys um, and have them here tomorrow. So that's great. He um, says he's got one two and a half inch pulley at the warehouse. I asked if he had a three inch one over there and he said, yeah, he's got one three inch pulley also. So um, I kind of like the idea of having two different size pulleys. That way um, you're not having both the spindle and the motor running at 3450 and maybe one uh, encouraging the other, you know, one exciting the other. So uh, by putting a three inch pulley on a motor, I'm going to be increasing the speed of the blade to 4200 RPM, which is well uh, below the 5500 RPM that is maximum for the blade. So I told him, uh, you know, I'm interested, but I said, if these pulleys are uh, crappy, if they are not uh, true, I'm going to be bringing them back. To which uh, he says, uh, no, Mr. Forget, if you, uh, this is a special order. If you order it, our policy is uh, no return on special order items. So uh, we've got a Mexican standoff. The problem is that I need the pulleys more than he seems to need to sell them to me. And uh, they're only $35 uh, tax included. So I decided to go ahead and take a chance and I've ordered them. So here's a two and a half inch pulley that did come in. Piece of crap. The machining even uh, washed out on the casting. It's not fully formed and even those portions that are fully formed do not run true with a bore. I checked that with a dial indicator. Chicago die casting should be ashamed of themselves. This will be uh, useless to me and I can't return it. Now the 3 inch is better. Um, runs fairly true here. I put the indicator on it, maybe three or four thousand. It's not bad. But um, watch this. Now that is vibrating without a belt on. Just the uh, pulley itself uh, is out of balance. So what are we going to do here? So here's the plan. I'm going to balance the new 3 inch pulley and I'm going to try to uh, straighten out one of the original 2.5 inch uh, ones. And that will be the combination of pulleys I intend to use in here. In uh, Gadgets 58 we were doing soft bearing balancing where the work was allowed to uh, move freely on a pendulum. This is more of a hard bearing uh, balancing application. We're using the very same accelerometer as we did in uh, Gadgets 58. You'll recall that we only use the X axis um, on that chip. So we're going to be measuring any movement in this direction here only. It's held on there with uh, some double adhesive tape. I've painted the face of the three inch pulley black and put a piece of uh, white uh, duct tape as our reference. We'll be using the very same photo cell as we did in Gadgets 58. It's going to be just held by hand uh, about that distance away from the pulley. By holding the photo cell directly in line 
with the um, accelerometer, we're going to be negating the fact that this hard bearing method does not produce a 180 degree shift as a soft bearing method did in Gadgets 58. So uh, the two will cancel out and we will be reading the graph in the very same way, uh, which means that uh, we have a sine wave that is AC coupled and uh, any uh, portion of the sine wave that is below the zero volt line um, will mean remove weight and any portion that's above the zero will say to add weight. Let's do it. The 720 degree overlay has been anchored at both ends. Let's have a look here. And it says almost 48 mils at 235 degrees. It says to add weight. So 235 degrees. is over here, says to add some weight right here. So we need to confirm that before we do anything permanent. I'm going to um, strap on a small weight, this quarter inch nut. Cut the excess here. This uh, freehand thing is not perfect, but uh, it's convenient. So like we went to uh, about 11 now at 223 degrees. So that confirms we're going in the right direction. I ground a little bit of material off the front face. And because there's a little bit more meat, I ground more off the back face. I'm going to retouch my paint on the front and I'm hoping to be able to do the final trims on the back side here. We're going to uh, anchor the 720 degree overlay and if I measure in here we're within about three or four mils, two or three mils. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. That was just one single rough grind. I could uh, bring it down but it's running really really smooth so I'm, I'm good with that. Something else that's quite interesting here. Um, this is a 3450 motor. So um, at that RPM, one revolution here, 360 degrees, that's only 18 milliseconds. In between there is that slight movement by the accelerometer. We're capturing that and it's reference to the uh, photo cell. Pretty cool stuff. So we have ourselves a three inch pulley that's good to go. Now that we have a three inch pulley that we can use, we need a two and a half. I've taken one of the originals here. I've uh, taken a half inch bolt, a couple of washers and nut, and I've uh, tightened that up to give you something to hang on to. I've uh, indicated and marked the high side on the uh, V here. Taken a, a small half inch rod, cut it at an angle, filed it a little bit to make sure there are no sharp uh, edges. It's going to be used as a punch and allow me to come in at an angle. And I'll be able to give this thing a couple of uh, little love taps. Then I'll be able to bring this one so that it gets parallel. 
There'll be some back and forth, of course, uh, re-indicating and coming back here a couple of times. But uh, this is fairly soft. Yes, it's brittle, but we don't need to uh, move it very much. I think uh, we can do this. So I've got this uh, three or four thou here on uh, each side of the V. Um, took me seven or eight trips uh, from the vise uh, back to the motor to indicate it. I'm going to uh, give it a little bit of a touch up here with this uh, small uh, scotch bright uh, disc on a um, die grinder. That's actually the tool that I used also with this uh, small grinding wheel to remove the weight when I was balancing the three inch uh, pulley. I'm going to balance it off camera, but I want to point something out to you here. This pulley is going to go on the arbor, and the arbor has a woodruff key. And for me to balance this, I have to try to simulate the exact conditions on the arbor with this key. And I have to account for a half key for this uh, motor. So, I think that this nail in here will account for the half key, little bit sticking out will account for the woodruff, and I think that looks fairly close. I've reinstalled the pulleys, they've been aligned with a straight edge, the belt is back on. And speaking of the belt, it's a problem. It varies in width, and you can see it raise the motor and lower it, and uh, it's not with the circumference of the uh, pulley, so it's not a pulley problem. It's uh, two or three spots here on the uh, belt. I just got back from town to explore my options, and basically the Options haven't changed from a couple days ago when I went out there. Um, I can get a new belt just like this with a variance in the width. So uh, my plan is to try to uh, address this. I'm going to uh, indicate, there's only two or three spots here that are really bad. I'll uh, indicate it. I'm going to mark it with a soapstone and I'm going to draw file that area until it doesn't raise like that and uh, we'll see if I can uh, get that to work. Well if nothing else it should make for an interesting comment section but it's working so I marked it uh, here to there and I want to draw file over here. I did draw file on this side then I turned the belt around because I get easier access by doing it on this side And I'm making progress, and I can tell by my dial indicator when I test it. Job completed on dressing up that belt. Have a look at how it rides in that pulley. That's a million times better than it was. So if we have a look at this now, we'll notice a couple of things. So uh, we have our 59 hertz, that's the speed of the motor, and we have uh, 72 hertz. 
that's now the new speed of the uh, saw blade, uh, 4200 RPM. So that all makes sense. I do not know what the uh, 50 hertz, uh, you know, it used to be uh, 42 hertz, um, has to be the belt again. But um, another very important thing to uh, notice here is that uh, we were uh, around 23 decibels initially. We're down to uh, 38, 39 decibels. That is an exponential scale. This is a substantial reduction in vibration. So uh, overall, I'm pleased. Uh, you feel it too, uh, just uh, you know, when you're present uh, near this thing. Uh, it's all good. I've been meaning to get at this uh, shake rail and roll in this table saw for some 35 years. Uh, my procrastination is matched by my determination. Uh, that uh, drive belt, uh, that was about 20 bucks at the stores. Uh, and uh, I am a real uh, frugal kind of guy, but I would have sprung for the 20 bucks if uh, they were better than the one I already had. So uh, I hope also that the angle of the vibration analysis that was done here and the balancing that was done directly on the motor in a hard bearing kind of uh, method, uh, I hope that that uh, you found also useful. So uh, we'll catch you guys later.